Happy Valley. But the arrogances of the fever pitch and the statues of Jopa still remain out of commission. Little of the past matters. What does is the return to greatness of Penn State Nittany Lion football. This group is one of the best teams they put out onto a field in years. An elite defense that takes no prisoners. Skill positions loaded with talent. A quarterback who isn't a liability. The dream, foolish or not, is to make it to the college football playoff. Decisive wins against Wisconsin and Auburn solidify their claim. But they hit a speed bump against Iowa. If John Clifford had been healthy, they would have won the game easily. But they had to replace him with a man that couldn't throw a football. A bitter defeat was their punishment for unfortunate circumstances. It wasn't all lost, however. Penn State was still ranked 7th in the nation. They still controlled their own destiny. And they were getting a bit of a break not just with the bye week, but with their next opponent. The Fighting Illini of Illinois. Fresh off a changing of the guard from Lovey Claus to Brett Bielema. They aren't considered to be relevant in the Big Ten landscape, but they play hard and are a competitive team. All but two of their losses were by one score. With this in mind, their 2-5 and five record can be considered as deceiving despite an earlier skid. Even then, they aren't being given much of a chance. Penn State is favored by 24 and a half. And why wouldn't they be? They're at home against a pushover and they have greater aspirations than being a doormat for Ohio State. But you still must play the games. To witness this is to see one of the ugliest cases of offensive play calling and performance this side of the Mississippi. If you were to ask someone about the execution of these offenses, they'd be in favor of it. The QB of the Fighting Illini is a man who once jobbed for Rutgers. Feel for Otsikowski. Poor bastard. Illinois' offense couldn't match shapes their sort of sorts against the Nittany Lion D. Even with this alleged fumble recovery for a Penn State touchdown, the Illini stand no chance. But we know the real stars of the show today. Ref ball. This touchdown was nullified thanks to saying that forward progress had been stopped. This is apparently enough to stop forward progress these days. And it's not reviewable. Don't worry, Penn State, they'll repay the favor with a few makeup calls later. Unsurprisingly, Illinois did jack shit with this fortune. Penn State would also make their own. A terrible pass caught with an outstanding effort and a less terrible pass caught for a touchdown. Happy Valley was lavishing in an expected burning of Illini. It was the end of the first quarter, but still plenty of time for delusions to amplify. They are playing a team that hasn't scored in six consecutive quarters. And will probably keep going for longer since Illinois is as one-dimensional as a Dickens novel. A crucial fumble on a missed block results in Penn State getting the ball deep in Illinois territory, but they can do little with it. They must settle for a field goal. Still all good for the Nittany Lions until we realize they're having trouble slowing down their opponent's rushing game. Third down after third down converted. They marched down the field until the worst case scenario happens. They gave up points to them. Illinois' first points in over 95 minutes of play. And they had burned eight minutes of clock in the process. In the first half possession was heavily dominated by the Illini. The score would be 10 to seven Penn State at halftime. The over on total points scored might be in danger, but there was still hope in Happy Valley. The offense would get it together in the second half. Or would they? The passing game is still out of sorts, potentially due to Clifford's lingering injury. At the end of the second quarter, the Illini would be a dick by not lying down to die. The Penn State defense will do more than enough to bury them. Happy Valley is now becoming Euphoric Valley. That is until the field goal unit comes on and pushes the kick wide. Endless trickery by the football gods. Illinois is now with a chance to do the unthinkable and tie the game. Their kicker returned the favor by missing a 50-yarder. How kind of them. Both offenses doing jack shit. The kind of game that harkens back to the first half of Penn State, Wisconsin. Two quarters worthy of immortality. Offensive miscues and follies all game long. Now concern is setting in. The Fighting Illini running game was still giving them fits. Sloppiness abound. And all against a team that's gone 27, 109, and 4 against AP Top 10 teams. Into the fourth quarter, a field goal still separated the two teams, but Illinois was charging. Then the worst case scenario for Nittany Lions fans. The Illini successfully threw a pass and scored more points. You remember that makeup call that was owed to Penn State? This was it. 
flag well after the play had settled for reasons of glorious ref ball. This is apparently offensive pass interference. It was also apparently caught past the line of scrimmage. Sure, Jen, whatever you say. Illinois must try again. Thanks to another timely Penn State penalty to give them a first down, they capitalize on the chance to score again. Cue another penalty for Illinois. Offensive holding. This one's a bit less questionable, but still iffy. As two penalties take away points from the Illini, they are forced to kick a field goal. The game is now tied. An unbelievable sight on its own. Now we begin the real drama. The offensive MVPs on either side are the officials. Ineptitude is the name of the game now. Stall drive after stall drive as the seconds tick off the clock. Tied at 10 with the fourth quarter coming to an end. Happy Valley has gone from tolerant to wanting James Franklin dead. We now begin the dueling fates of sudden death. Illinois wins the coin toss and chooses to defend first. Penn State will get their chance to avoid humiliation. They convert on fourth down but fail to take advantage of it. They must settle for a field goal to start. Now it's the chance for Illinois. But they can do little besides get stuffed on runs and nearly throw an interception. They respond in kind with a field goal. The most points scored since the second quarter. Big Ten football at its finest. We now head to second overtime. And Illinois will get ball first. They are so close to tasting the sweet innards of the end zone. Its pungent aroma tantalizes them with promises of victory, but they are denied by a stout Penn State defense. They must settle for another field goal. The Nittany Lions get the ball back and do jack and shit with it. They are also lured by the siren's call, but their ships are wrecked by jagged rocks. Another field goal is their punishment. Now we get to the part of the game that everyone enjoys the most. Cheap ham-fisted gimmicks. Do you remember the seven overtime epic between Texas A&M and LSU a few years ago? That's too much action for the old fucks in charge of the NCAA. They need to protect the players, so they're going to do nothing but two-point conversions from this point forward. We enter third overtime tied at 16. Happy Valley is as stressed as a grad student writing a thesis paper. Penn State goes first. It's a trick play. It was a clear for catch it. Philly special only works for the eastern part of the state, boys. James Franklin is about to become a dead man for his baffling play calling. But can Illinois counter? The student section was probably yelling obscenities about that man's butt. It worked to lead them to a fourth overtime. Illinois gets first possession, but they flub the chance in another testament to the glories of ugly football. Penn State has a chance to escape, but they want this horrible Big 12 waltz to continue for much longer. The agony for everyone watching live and on television will continue on. Even worse, Art Sikowski was injured on the Fighting Illini's attempt, giving him flashbacks to the horrors of Rutgers. This forces Michigan transfer Brandon Peters to take the reins of the sluggish offense. Overtime number five will now commence. God help us all. Penn State tries a conventional running play, but it's read perfectly by the defense. Can Illinois put us all out of our misery? Fuck no. Penn State's defense counters. On to overtime six. The poor bastards watching are now restless. Playoff aspirations hang in the balance. Illinois takes the first stab and whiffs horrifically. The Nittany Lions can now overcome humiliation. Look for shovel pass. Strange. Stood up. Inside the one yard line, Illinois gets another stop. But cannot overcome the Illini defense at the goal line. Overtime seven will now commence. Just consider it one of those fancy meals with a bunch of small plates to give it the illusion you're getting an experience. Oh, this is an experience, all right. It's now the sixth game in FBS history to reach seven overtimes. Will it finally end here? Instead, they'll run it. It's not a game. Is he in? Penn State thinks so. The officials say no. It won't for Penn State. Assholes clenched, Happy Valley. They will. Josh McCray, no chance. We may now release them for the next minute. <laughs> we have now reached new territory for college football. Eight overtimes. A new record! Tension draws as Illinois will get another shot. Maybe someone will score this time. Jet sweep. Isaiah Williams at the goal line. He's in! Took these teams long enough. 
With the pressure on, Penn State must respond in kind. Can they do it? Noah King at the goal line. Is he in? Yes! Whoa, slow down with all this scoring. You may deceive people into thinking this was a football game or something. You sick fucks wanted a show and now you've got it. We're headed to ninth overtime! Nine times. The Nittany Lions are the guy from Squid Game that has to go first in the Bridge of Death. They managed to survive without breaking glass. Clifford to try and throw. Ticked. Incomplete. Oh no. Happy Valley is now at the brink of death with a chance of having everything fail at once. At least with the stout defense they can bring this game to ten overtimes, right? Rolls out. The unthinkable has happened. Illinois, a 24 and a half point underdog, has delivered the killing blow to Penn State at Happy Valley. Not only killing off the mood at Beaver Stadium, but potential college football playoff hopes they had. It now lies in a graveyard next to Joe Pa's dignity and the shitty service at Gingerbread Man. Don't worry, they would have lost to Ohio State or something like that. That's a given. Brett Bielema has the statement win that solidifies his first year as coach at Illinois. James Franklin is probably updating his resume to apply for a job at LSU or USC. And Penn State suffers the worst fate of all, being ranked lower than Pitt in the AP poll. Little brother can gloat for roughly a week. A terrible day for State College, but a great day for Champaign, Illinois. To the rest of us, it wasn't just an ugly football game that shouldn't have been anywhere close to competitive. It was the greatest game.